opened it yourself, Ziskai. You can drink now. What is Uman? Uh, so you can, in biology. Yay! Ziskai, you gonna drink it? Yeah? Baruch Atah. What is Uman? You can study an ant with a, a, an ant colony, like King Solomon, the Proverbs. You look at the ant, how they work, and they work together, and the whole, uh, the colony. Or, socially, or you can study uh, the ant individually. And if, uh, and, and if you have a high-powered microscope, you can study the cells of the ant, right? And then you can learn so much about biology and evolution. So what is Uman in contrast to other chassidim? And what is Uman in and itself? When you come to Uman, what's the practice? Is there a practice? Or is showing up, the entire th practice is showing up? As Rabbeinu said, Yagidavant, Nishgidavant, Abi, you were in Uman, right? So there's also, we know there's a formula. And the formula is, um, Putting a pruto with zdaka, saying the sarika pitlach, and then to be a breslaver, there's an avoda. Rab Nachman was very uh, paranoid about sex and anything about that, and 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 and, and I think a proper breslaver traditionally back in the day couldn't even look a woman in the eye. So how do you do that? So I'm watching and I'm going to translate for you. So the Hebrew priest said that the Hebrew God said that you have to show up to the temple three times a year. Reb Nachman only asked for one time to show up, Rosh Hashanah. So Reb Nachman won, because they asked for too much. Reb Nachman made one place, one time. So after Judaism decentralized, uh, still the Temple and Israel as a land became a, a central point. However, um, Uman restored the pilgrimage pro uh, concept in Ju back to Judaism. Uh, it, was a, it was a time when even from people were embarrassed to go. When I was there um, over 15 years ago, in, uh, I was there in 2000, uh, as a Lubavitcher boy, we were uh, ashamed. It's like a, a Rosh Yeshiva in a strip club. He's like, no pictures, no pictures. I don't want to come out in any pictures. We were afraid and ashamed. We didn't know if the if a harm could come out to be for Shaduchim. These were, you know, the social, primitive social circles that uh, no, uh, uh, nobody that follows Shani Vachamishi wants their children to grow up thinking that way. Uh, always worried that uh, certain social s circles will accept you or reject you based on the fact that you went to another group that's from the same religion as, as you, just a little denomination different. So anyway, uh, and the Litvish yeshivas had a lot of problems and persecution. The Satmar groups, the kids would uh, secretly say the Ten Kapitlach, the formula of Reb Nachman, the Tikkun HaKlali, and they would hide it. They would write down the Kapitlach on numbers on a little card and keep it in the back of their tillim or hide it somewhere, and then they, because they had to, you know, memorize the formula, and they didn't want to be caught uh, uh, m uh, spinning the tillim like uh, going from Michtam Ludavid and skipping to Lamed Beis, and then uh, Ein Zayin skipping and going throughout the tillim. Then you know you're you're following Reb Nachman, one Chabad woman who went to uh, um, she married a famous doctor. She moved to Long Island. She told me when she was in um, a Chabad yeshiva, there was another girl that punched her in the face because she said you're breast live. <laughs> so it, it, these things are just natural to people who uh, become uh, too caught up in human imagination. There is no uh, basic tenet in being a Breslaver. There is no 13 principles of faith, uh, and there is no garb. Um, uh, so the, there is a the nice video that came out of the Chassid. I will uh, speaking about Uman, why he uh, why he comes and how you come and what it means that Reb Nachman is going to put in the note for you, which means Reb Nachman does the work for you, and this is a promise that of Reb Nachman. So believers have um, what to believe, something concrete and not so confusing. Where Reb Nachman says, "You come here, and I'll take care of you. Just come." And it's very rich in, in, its, uh, in the history of what it means, uh, 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 Hasidism influenced by Kabbalah, reforming Kabbalah. Some of the Kabbalists were such assholes, or maybe they really believed it, but the implications were horrible. And they said, And why are Jews calling out to God and 
He maybe listens, he maybe doesn't, but they're not being answered. The Kabbalist says, in the natural physical world, I can prove to you that you weren't answered for what you asked. And he answers, the Kabbalist says, because you don't know the formula. You don't know the kavanas. You don't know the combination lock code. Uh, these um, spoiled brats, some of them were very wealthy and well-fed by their sponsors. They had time to think about bullshit all day. Were the ones who, who laughed and persecuted the poor farmers who didn't really know how to read. So came Rav Nachman and said, you come here, even if you're sinners, which is like probably it meant uh, indulging in sex or food or whatever else people believed was a sin at the time in the medieval, Come to me and I'll clean you. And he would say, come with the dirty, muddy boots. So, so, uh, and then there is no garb for a breast lever. There is no actual lavush. Like in Chabad, it's more of a philosophy. So, uh, so I was in yeshiva. Someone said to me, you know, a, a breast lever could be in jeans. He says, tikkun aklali, he keeps to this, this and that. And he does the pilgrimage every year. Um, well, uh, it's also not true because uh, you don't. There are there are, there are no tenants, but there's a makeup of things that make you a breslev or make you shaykh to breslev or not shaykh. So, so it could be an orthodox breslev who believes in uh, keeping Shabbos and kosher, and then he takes other extremes about the paranoia about sex and doesn't look at women, and he can have a blinder on his face in the airport. Or you could have a, a breast liver that uh, is non-orthodox and is just spiritual and believes in the magical powers of coming to the Nachman. So uh, when I was in Uman, I, I asked uh, from the Chshuvi Anash, one of the most chosh of a breast liver, Yom Tif uh, He was a real mystic. He would toivel in the mikveh like 10 times a day. And I asked him, is uh, Reb Nachman compatible with my previous beliefs in the Lubavitcher Rebbe and I believe that the Mashiach and the Mashiachist package I had from that I got from Yeshiva and from everywhere else, other sources, you know, friends and family. So uh, he said to me something amazing. He shoehorned, look up the word shoehorning, he philosophically shoehorned Breslev into Chabad just to cater to me because he was a best friend of my older brother and he uh, had a special kinship for me. Uh, and back then, Uman wasn't such a big uh, pilgrimage, so, so it was really small. And it was Hanukkah, it wasn't Rosh Hashanah at the time. So in Uman, he said to me, yeah, it could be that the Rebbe is, uh, you know, secretly the messenger of Reb Nachman, and he's going to uh, bring everyone to 770, and then when they come to 770, he's going to tell them that Uman is the place. Whoopsie! Why? Be uh, 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 because when the Breslover says Tzaddik in the books, it's only meaning Reb Nachman. Reb Nassan is not a Mamala Makam. He's just a writer. Reb Nassan is a Tzaddik, but uh, uh, a Tzaddik like your grandmother says Tzaddik, but not the Tzaddik of Lakutu Maran. That is only Reb Nachman. So uh, everyone else, imagine if I would have known this, everyone else is Mufur Samim Shal Sheker. Anybody that, if someone's carrying your bag at the airport because he thinks you're holy, you're already the bad guy, according to the Breslov uh, philosophy of the strict adherence to uh, to the one tzaddik. So he said he shoehorned it and said that uh, could be in the in the secret side of the mysticism, the Rebbe is just the guy that's getting everybody to 770 because they want a modern Rebbe, a college-educated Rebbe, and then from there he tells them everybody you must go to Uman to get your tikkun. So that Nachman gives you a tikkun. Everyone has a special mission. So w that special mission is that uh, you have to come to the tzaddik and he reveals it to you. That's why uh, Zalman Shechter would say that Rebbe is a geologist of the soul. And these and other mystical beliefs played in at the time. And it's something that not only uh, uh, exists till today, but it's been revived till today. Why? Because Uman is something that it is what you want it to be. Everyone can superimpose on Uman and Breslev and Reb Nachman what they want him to be. All the Sephardi adherents to Breslev see Reb Nachman as more of a Sephardic Tzaddik. They don't see him as an Ashkenazi Rebbe. So you can, you can impose and imagine it to be, and that's the best when it, it's compatible to everyone, even though monotheism is always one truth that everybody has to stick to. But in this mystical type of pagan style um, um, religion, 
it allows you to superimpose your own imagination and beliefs, and this way everybody can have a happy and good time and enjoy a Yom Tif. This is a, a new, re revived success of, uh, of, uh, of, a pil of a Jewish pilgrimage that uh, didn't exist for over 2,000 years. Thank you for watching.